That one's not very good, is it? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video on our daily, our 2002 Golf. It's a Mark IV uh, G, well, it's not GT TDI because it's an estate, but it is TDI 130. And basically, we're going to be looking at the suspension. Um, we're looking at the back bushes. Those of you who follow, oh, the Rosers. Those of you who follow the channel uh, might remember ages and ages ago, I said that the suspension bushes are starting to go out and you could feel it. And they're not banging. And they're not horrendous, but you can feel it. So on the start of back, you can feel the shimmy. The front definitely leads doing, but the back, you can feel the shimmy. So what I've got is I've got a pair of these bushes. Now, I bought these a long time ago, uh, a long, long time ago. And th they do go in a certain way. They just can't just go in any way. So uh, we'll have to work that out because I've never done these before. Um, so we're going to find out how to do it. I've done other bushes, but yeah, we shall find out what to do. Now, I have actually borrowed a tool of a good friend for fitting these bushes. It says remover, but I don't think it's for remover for the rear bushes. So putting them in should be okay, but taking them out might be another issue. I know I, I want to do it on the car, removing as little as possible. So if I can touch almost wood, I'd like to be able to take, lift it up. We've got the quick jacks under there, ready to go. Um, lift it up and preferably not disconnect the brakes or anything. So we'll have a go at that and see, see if we can. I've slacked off all the wheel bolts and everything already. So we get it up on the uh, quick jacks in a sec and have a look. And we had a visit from a very special guest, Amelia, my biggest fan and her parents. Thank you very much for coming. And she always gives me a big thumbs up whenever she sees me on the telly. I've also got a big thank you. Look what she did. That's awesome. Does that remind you of anything? Yeah. Well, that's going to go up on the wall. Pride of place next to that big one. But Amelia, thank you very much. And if you do like what we're doing here, want to help the channel grow, please go below, give us a thumbs up. Let's go up then. All right, so we're heading under and that's where the bushes is mounted. If I can get the light, oh, this is rubbish. So that one, that one, goes in there. I'm really sorry, I've only got one hand at the moment, so there we go, is that better? That one goes in there. So what I'm intending on doing, if I can, is just undoing that bolt there. It's a, well, there's a nut and a bolt, there's a nut on the outside. Same on the other side. And then I might slacken off the brackets for the um, brake lines, see how much gives in them really. I don't really want to take the brake lines off, that one's bolted. I have been spraying this all with WD-40 so I'm going to give it another spray in a minute. So yeah, in theory I'm thinking of putting a jack under here, under this the beam, undoing them bolts and lowering it down and then seeing how I'm gonna get those bushes out. I mean, I, I'm gonna try one side first and then I'll do the other side and hopefully show you how I've done it. So I'm gonna have a practice basically, but first of all, we need to get down and see what these bushes are, you know, what orientation these bushes are. So I don't know if you can see, they're a bit of a funny angle, aren't they? Yeah, there must be some markings. But anyway, first things first, let's get them out and lower down if we can. See if we can allow these uh, brake lines to just give a little bit to 
because I don't want to bring the brakes. So let's get underneath and see what we can do. Oh, and I forgot to say there, 18 mil headed bolts through there. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can slack these off and go from there. Right, well, I hope you guys can see okay. I've taken the wheels off and I'm gonna have a go at these bad boys. So let's see how we get on. So we've encountered our first problem, which I didn't expect. Yeah, um, that bolt won't come out. It's hitting the fuel tank. So the only thing I can think of doing is maybe removing this bracket. So, uh, hmm. Didn't expect that, so let's give that a spray up and uh, see if we can lower that. I'm also going to take off that bracket for the uh, brake line there as well, so I'll let it come down a bit further. So these are 17s, there's four of them one, two, three, four, and uh, I'm presuming I can get a socket on them. Yep, all right, so let's have a go at that. Let's get my big bar on it first, I think. Oh, not too bad. Well, that was harder than I thought it was going to be. Oops, sorry, I'm waving you around. So, on this side, to clear the fuel tank, I had to take off those bolts, like I said earlier. Um, so what I did is I took out two and put some nice long M10 bolts in. Can you see those? I, I'm struggling to see myself there, but there. So I put some nice long ones in to lower it down and took the weight on the jack and then slid the bolt out. So uh, I haven't actually undone that bracket yet up there, but I will do. Uh, so uh, next, I've got to lower the beam down a bit so we can get to the bushes, I guess. Right, so we've got this bracket off up there so that allows a lot more slack. And we've just got, all I did is shoved a screwdriver in the hole so it doesn't just drop down. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do, I'm not going to drop the whole beam at once. I think I'll do one side at a time. Oh, sorry, it's coming the other way. Got the same there, got the screwdriver in. Just undone that little bracket to give us a bit more slack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice on this one and see how I've done it, because I'm not sure how I'm going to get that part yet. And then hopefully I might be able to take the bracket off this side and make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm not sure. So uh, bear with, but uh, we'll get there. So we've got an update on the passenger side, which is the one I'm gonna practice on. <laughs> yes. Basically what we've had to do, we've got the jack there. It's not really doing much, but I've put a scissor jack on top of the arm. Can you see that there? So the scissor jack just pushing away from the chassis down on the arm. I've uh, disconnected the ABS, not disconnected, but just unclipped it so it's not tight. Same with the uh, handbrake cable, 
or, or e-brake cable and I've actually taken this bracket off as well using the, those uh, 416 mil headed bolts up there just so I can protect the hose uh, can you see it back there the brake hose I didn't want to stress the brake hose but I can get around the bush now and while we're here can you see this it's quite hard to see but it is quite perished and it is a Volkswagen part and you can see also if I do that how many gaps are around it so the new bushing has got a lot less gaps so it should be firmer I mean I don't want it to be racing I didn't want to go poly bush because this is my daily and I'm an old git so I want it nice and comfy but that's how we got so far so yeah oh yeah and you can see the position of the bush there's that big lump see that lump there that shows the position of the bush. I haven't got a bush close to the new bush close to hand, and I wonder if I can say bush any more times. <laughs> anyway, let's get this one out, and uh, we'll work from there. Well, it's the next morning, and uh, yeah, for you, just a few moments, and for me, a an afternoon of toil and frustration and as you can see I done up the last bolt and just walked out uh, now that was a pain in the backside um, yeah I think I need to have a tidy up and go through <laughs> what I found and and what is not good um, yeah right let's let's sort this out and then we'll go through how I ended up doing this side so we've had a little bit of a tidy up here. Now, basically I borrowed this kit, which is a laser suspension bush removing installing kit. It's that number, 4748. And that is not the right tool <laughs> to do the pack suspension bushes on a Mark IV Golf. So I tried and tried for ages using the bits of this kit I can even use a thread obviously that does not fit through there but uh, in the end you know I tried putting that on that back end to push it through and no joy in the end basically that's the only bit of the kit that I use was that bush well not bush that cup so that went there that went there Obviously the arm is in there, you're pressing that way. And then I used these bits on the other side with nuts, bolts, washers, and this this is 10 mil threaded bar. And as you can see, it had a hard life. I think I'm gonna have to get some more studded bar. I might have something in my cupboard, I'll have a look. And I used, this is um, the components I used from me cheapo bearing fitting kit from eBay. I, I bought that ages ago. It was only, I think it's about 30 quid, something like that. But anyway, this moral of the story is that is not the tool. <laughs> and I struggled like hell. Oh, one thing I did forget to say yesterday is I've got new bolts as well. And a new nut. But uh, yeah, so getting the old one out was probably easier. Well, it was a lot easier. Ultimately, what I did, because there's holes in the new one, or duh, on the old one, you can see where I cut there. I just put junior hacksaw put that through oh throwing it around so when this is mounted in I'll show you when we get there put that through there and then basically put that upside down so I'm cutting the wrong way and then it did come out a couple times but because it's plastic it sawed sawed I managed to saw through it and it crushed it easy put a chisel up you can see there and it knocked out really, really easy once I'd done that, which is good. And one other, <laughs> one other thing, so if you look at the new one, which is a, a Febby part, nope, Lem Ford apart, it hasn't got much of a lead, whereas the original one, see it's got a bit more of a taper on it. So that's something else I had to do is put a taper on it, because these are plastic. I didn't realize the old one would be plastic, but yeah, these are plastic, you just need to file a bit more of a lead on that bit and it goes in but right, i'll show you that all in a minute sorry i'm waffling on but yeah last last night i just put the tools down and walked out because i was getting frustrated i was getting frustrated 
Here we are on the passenger side. And what I've done is I've taken off the bracket, off of the chassis leg, I guess. So it's easier to see. I mean, I didn't need to, I could have done it without, but it just makes it easier to get to on this side. And I've put a scissor jack pushing from the chassis leg down on top of there. And then the trolley jack pushing back up, it just stops it moving so much. And you can see that that bracket up there on the pipe, uh, brake pipe that I've just slackened off to allow it just to, to flex. There's no tension on it, see? So it just allows it to come down enough. So that's where we're set up here. Um, I've also got our junior hacksaw. All I did was pass it through the hole in the bottom. And can you, hang on, let's get the light. Can you see I've set it, basically, it's upside down. So I'm actually cutting downwards and I'm gonna cut through the plastic, which is the outer. Uh, okay, can I explain that? I've got, that. I've got the new one. So basically that is what you see in there. This is plastic and I'm gonna cut, you can't do it on this one because it's not got holes, but I'm gonna cut through this plastic until um, I feel the metal of that and, and you will feel it. There's no problem with that. You, you know, you'll feel the difference in cut and it does cut, cut quite easily. So what I'm gonna do is cut two grooves, one there, move it over, cut another one. And then I'm gonna bang a pin punch through it to make a gap. And then that will sort of allow it to shrink a little bit. And then I'll use a big pin punch, which I've just dropped this big pin punch and then I'll just knock out the remainders. So uh, I'll set you up on a tripod somewhere. <sighs> do apologize if you can't see very well, but it's, it's a bit awkward under here. Even though we've got these quick jacks, this, as I found on the other side, this is a flipping, quite an awkward job to do on your back. It'd be nice if we had a ramp, wouldn't it? One day. Well, I have got that ramp, but I've not got good power, so yeah, one day. All right, let's go for it. I went for a few blades on the other side, so see how far we go. wiggling later there you go can you see the two grooves I've cut that's pretty much all the way through one thing I did forget to say was that's the mark the lug that marks the position of it you can see I've put a couple of chisel marks in there just to show where it is right next thing just going to tap that groove out and then hopefully the whole thing will come out I'm sure you saw that that didn't exactly go to plan. Um, yeah, I pulled my pin punch out and then I got my chisel stuck trying to get my pin punch out. And then I got the big pin punch stuck and then had to beat out with the other pin punch. <laughs> but we got there. There it is. Bit beaten up, but that doesn't matter. But yeah, you can see where he cut through there, and hopefully, oh, didn't leave too much of a mark in there. No, that looks all right. So this now needs a really, really good clean up. Need to get all the scale out and all the rust. So I'm going to be using a flapper wheel 
which I've got hidden behind me. Sorry, I'm going to use this one in my battery drill, and I'll probably some of the scale I'll sort of chip away with the, the ball pane of the hammer because it you'd be surprised it is quite scaly in there. So uh, bear with, let me do that. You all see that that's pretty boring, and I'll come back to you when hopefully it's clean. There we go, right, that's pretty clean if you ask me. I mean, there's a little bit of pitting in there, but you've got, I mean, all the scales gone. If you have any black shiny stuff in there, that's probably scales, so you can chip it off. So a lot of those little divots you see are probably from me chipping that off. But yeah, that's nice and clean, ready for the, um, the hard bit now. I've also filed a tiny bit more of a chamfer on the bush and if you can see in there I've put a mark front and back to show where that lug goes. It's that lug there. So because it's going in from the back I'll be able to see where that lug goes. So I'll set you up on the tripod and let's see how long this side takes, eh? There we go, it's in. Now that was a lot easier than the other side. First, because I probably prepped it a little bit better and I put that uh, leading edge on as well and I was I knew which tools to use, so. There, pleased with that. One thing I did forget was, that's the old uh, ABS cable. It's nice and slack there, but remember to take it out of this bracket so it gives you a bit more movement. So all I'm gonna do now, is I need to put that bracket back on first because the bolt won't go in because of the fuel tank. So we do that, then push it up and then bolt it up and hopefully that's the back done. Right, I've moved you guys over so I hope you can see better. So first things first, I'm gonna uh, take that trolley jack out. Not trolley jack, uh, scissor jack out from there. That'll give us a bit more slack. Put a lot of weight on that anyway. <laughs> right, let's see if we can get that bracket in without the jack there actually. I didn't think of that. Perhaps I should have done this first. Well, no, we're good. So I'm going to get that long bolt in first, I think. I'll try. Just because it hits that otherwise. And this is the new bolt. And we must remember, we don't do these up until there's weight on the suspension, because it can preload the rubber and damage it. So that's something you've got to remember to do. And we've got weight on the wheels. The rest of them's all okay, just this one. Right, I'm gonna stop yapping now, because then we can go on time-lapse when I get these. Four up here, and that one done up. Here we go. 
they're all in and I shuffled it around a bit so it pretty much lines up with the original bolt holes. Sorry, I don't know if I've shown you then. Anyways, yeah, I shuffled them around so it lines up with the bolt holes. The bolt through the middle, that one is not tight because like I said earlier, we need to uh, put the weight on it. But apart from tightening, or oh, reattaching the um, handbrake cable or emergency brake cable, which also hooks on underneath that little clip thing there. That is more, that's it. Oh, I just did a back fart <laughs> on my mat. That's gross. Uh, <laughs> right, yes. Uh, let's get out because my wife just came in. I don't know if uh, you heard me going blah, 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 on the time lapse, but I've got a cup of tea waiting. See you in a sec. We're back on the ground. Uh, obviously the wheels are on. Uh, done everything else up apart from those screw bolts there. So obviously we need the weight of the suspension on it. Otherwise it will try and twist the center section into the wrong position. So basically I'm just going to go do this one up and do, oh, it's spinning. I need two hands. Anyway, basically going to do these two up and then we're pretty much done, ready for a test drive. So we're just out on a test drive. Obviously I've done everything up. Those back bushes were a bit of a pain. Um, harder to get in than uh, the issue of getting them out. I thought it would be the other way around. But just lining them up and getting them in is a pain. So um, yeah, do go home, but even with my quick jacks, it was tight underneath. I mean, I know I've got a big belly, I've got a squish underneath there. But it was a tight fit. Um, so yeah, it is doable. It is doable without moving the brake lines because I've done it. Um, but it is a bit awkward to say the least. So um, oh look, oh I thought it was a policeman. Then it's a it's a dummy. <laughs> There's a Darth Vader. There's a Darth Vader there in high vis, looking like a police officer to slow people down. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, oh, back to it. I don't even know where I was. Um, yeah, nightmare of a job. I say a nightmare. It was a difficult job. It feels good. It does feel, I don't know, it feels planted. I mean, we're not in a sports car, obviously, but yeah, I think it's improved things a lot. So yeah, um, have a go. But like I was saying, it is difficult to get underneath you've got to get the car pretty high and then obviously you've got to support it on the structure of the not the body but you know but you can't lift it on the rear beam uh, and the rear beam mounts or you can't put axle sensors in there so it's a little awkward but uh, yeah but thank you very much for coming with us on another journey in the daily so uh, yes like I say, please give us a thumbs up if this is any use to you. I will learn to talk one day if this was any use to you or interesting. Uh, look us up on Instagram, Larks underscore school workshop. And I hope to see you next time. Cheers then. See, you didn't believe me, did you? It's Darth Vader. Hello? 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 How's it going? Okay. Do you want to or anything? Um, uh, not at the moment, I'm filming, so. Oh, sorry. That's alright, I'm on doing time lapse, so they just hear me going. <laughs> okay. right, I'll come in about 10 minutes, is that alright? Thank you. Alright, so we're back here. Uh, the car just Duh. Dog's going mental outside for some reason. Probably can hear me talking to a camera. Who knows? No, I'm not recording. What are you flashing for? What are you flashing for? Anybody in there? What's the mouse? Like gone on strike or something? Yeah, oh, God knows.